Geometry, we are into our fourth and final point of concurrency with regard to triangles, and that is called the orthocenter. So far we have covered the centroid, which is formed as the point of concurrency for your medians, the circumcenter, which is the point of concurrency of the perpendicular bisectors, and the incenter, which is the point of concurrency of your angle bisectors. The orthocenter is the port point of concurrency for your altitudes. And you notice that there's a little bit of stuff missing here as far as what its importance is, and we'll get to that here in a little bit. Um, but you can see in our actual triangles here, this one can be inside or outside the circle, just like some of our other centers. Um, if it's an acute triangle, the orthocenter will be in the interior. If it is a right triangle, the orthocenter is actually the right angle of a right triangle. If you think about that, the altitude from G would actually be the entire leg of the triangle. Same thing, the altitude from B would be the entire leg of the triangle. And then your altitudes with your obtuse triangles are outside of the triangle. If you saw the constructions video that was linked with this, you would see that we would have to extend a side of the triangle here to form the altitude in an obtuse triangle from this vertex. And that's going to be on the exterior of your original triangle, so your, your orthocenter will wind up being in that exterior region. Um, and then again, if it is a right triangle, your altitude from B is going to be right here at that right angle. Your altitude here, and then your altitude from your right angle actually goes through your right angle, so that becomes your orthocenter. So take a minute and see if you can use those concepts and those ideas to sketch where the orthocenter would be on these two triangles. One is the easier of the two for sure because you have your two altitudes that are your legs because this is a right triangle. The second one's definitely more complex. So if you're looking for the altitude from G, you have to extend segment HI towards the direction of G. Then you can drop the altitude. Now that's perpendicular here, but it would extend all the way through. Same thing, if I want the altitude from H to get perpendicular to segment GI, I have to extend segment GI, which I did in gray there, then I can drop that pink altitude. Those are going to intersect out here. And then the altitude from I is on segment GH perpendicular. All right, so a lot of talk here about altitudes, and we know that altitudes are perpendicular. That's going to be the way that we can identify the coordinates of this, because we are going to know that the altitude from I is going to be perpendicular to segment GH, and it's going to go through I. That's going to give me my point, I, and perpendicular to this segment, I'm going to need to find the slope of this segment, the opposite side, and use its opposite reciprocal. Then I can get my equation for my line. And that's the idea behind a problem like this, finding the coordinates of the orthocenter of a triangle. So one thing that might be helpful is to sketch what this looks like, um, just to kind of give you that visual of what segments are you finding slopes for, uh, what point are you using. It doesn't have to be super accurate. You just want to have that visual. Here isn't really all that accurate, but it's in the right order. We can kind of get a general sense. If I want the orthocenter now, what I need to do is write down all of my, or at least two, equations of altitudes. So when I look at this, I personally like to see the idea that the altitude from C is going to be vertical, because I can tell already A, is hor a B is horizontal. Okay, so this altitude is going to be a vertical line. Okay? And since it's a vertical line through C, then vertical through C, the x-coordinate is 1. I'm going to have one altitude have an equation of x equals 1. So it's going to meet here at 1, 6, and it goes through C at 1, 3. Now, I do need at least one more altitude, and that's where we have to start finding slopes. So we can decide, do I want the altitude from A or the altitude from B? And it never hurts to do all three just to be sure. Okay. So I'm going to choose A 
for no other reason than it's first in the alphabet. Okay? So if I want the altitude from A, I know that I already have a point, and that's at 0, 06, and it's actually my y-intercept, so I'm good with that. Now I need the slope of segment BC. Okay. All right, so the slope of segment BC is going to be the rise over the run. From C to B, I'm going from 3 to 6, that's up 3. And I'm going from 1 to 4, that's to the right 3. So that means it has a slope of 1. I don't want that slope, I want the perpendicular slope. The slope that's perpendicular is going to be negative 1. So now I have a second equation. I have y equals negative 1 or negative x plus 6. I can do that because that's the y-intercept. Well, if I know these two things, I know that the coordinates of my orthocenter, I'm going to have an x-coordinate at 1, and i got to find my y-coordinate by using substitution. <clears throat> I know my y-coordinate is going to be the opposite of my x-coordinate plus 6. The x-coordinate has to be 1 because it has to be on that vertical line. So my y-coordinate is going to be negative 1 plus 6 or 5. The orthocenter here would be at 1, 5. It would be actually right about there. And again, is this drawn to scale? Of course not. But so you wouldn't necessarily, it looks almost like that's the right angle. It's not about the scale here. It's about the algebra that we were able to use to find this. And if we found the uh, altitude from B, we would have wound up going through the exact same coordinate. All right, go ahead and take a minute and see if you can do the second one here on the next page. For example, I used point C, the altitude from C, and I found that using that point, the slope of AB, the perpendicular slope, I find a y-intercept at 16 thirds, I get this equation for the altitude from C. Using point B for my other, and the slope of AC being negative 1 9 the slope that's perpendicular would be a positive 9, and my equation would be y equals 9x minus 18 after finding the y-intercept. Solving that system, I get 2.5, 4.5. Okay, so if you have questions, don't hesitate to send an email. Um, now, what else is interesting about the orthocenter? There's really not that much else that's interesting. Um, there are a few things that can get really complex, or so when I say there's not much that interesting, I'd say the better answer is there's not that much more interesting that's really applicable to what we can do right now. Um, but one thing that is, is the fact that uh, there's this thing called the Euler line. So that's a famous, I believe he's a Swiss or Swedish mathematician, Leonard Euler. And he's done a lot of different mathematics, uh, was really important in the field of mathematics. Um, one thing that he discovered was this line, that your orthocenter, centroid, and circumcenter are always going to be collinear. Orthocenter, along with circumcenter, and centroid are always collinear. So he discovered that. That's called the Euler line. Incenter sometimes lies on that line, but not always. In fact, the only time it ever really does is if it's an isosceles triangle. If it's not an isosceles triangle, then the incenter is not collinear with these other points of concurrency. So that's something that's interesting. It's something that I wanted you guys to know and see and hear and remember, but it's not something that I'm going to hold you guys accountable for. Hi, Blake. Hi, Daddy. Yeah. All right. So I'm not sure he could pronounce that guy's name either, but hopefully you guys can, and hopefully you guys will get that right if we have that on an assessment. He's messing with my chair, so hopefully you guys get to laugh there. All right. Um, there's going to be a practice worksheet for you. And hey, Gavin. And we are going to go ahead and have our quiz next week on all of this material. So if you have questions, feel free to let me know. Good luck with everything.